Welcome back or welcome to my channel. If you are new, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below as well as check out the description box which has links to all of my social accounts as well as my website, corsche.com, which if you like this video, there are hundreds of posts on there with similar content that you may enjoy as well. Uh, so today we are going to jump into the video right away um, because there's a lot I want to talk about and this video is going to be about productive things you can do when you're home for winter break. I can feel your heart pounding like a kick drum, love it when I'm this drunk, ooh, yeah, like a fun, fun. I know that when you have an extended winter break, whether that's if you're lucky enough to have that in high school or for most people if you're in college, and you have, you know, three, four weeks where you don't necessarily have anything you have to do, it can be hard in a productive mindset, which is why I'm going to talk about productive activities and things that you can do when you're home. I do have a blog post about this as well, and in that blog post I list out 65 things you can do. I did narrow it down to my favorite 20 for this video because if I talked about all 65, it would probably take like three hours and nobody wants to watch that. So let's jump right into the list. Number one is to start a bullet journal. Bullet journals have so many uses. You can either use it to help make yourself more organized. You can use it to kind of track your thoughts and your moods throughout the day. Um, or you can just use it to be have a creative outlook. Any of those are going to be more productive than just watching Netflix. So real quick disclaimer, if you want to spend your winter break relaxing and watching Netflix and eating Christmas cookies, do it. Do whatever makes you the most happy. Do not let myself or anyone else pressure you into thinking that you have to stay productive during your winter break. But if you make the decision that you want to stay productive, then keep watching this video um, and remember that you need to do whatever is the best for your own mental wellness. Cool. All right, number two is to go through and get your 2021 planner set up. I am a huge planner person. If you go to my website or watch any of my other videos, you will see how much I talk about the importance of planners and how much they can help you live a more organized, focused, and productive life. If you are interested in how I'm gonna set up my 2021 planner, make sure you subscribe to my channel because the last week of December, that video will be going up and I have lots of helpful tips in there for how to do it. If anyone wants me to do one specifically for tips for setting up a college planner, let me know in the comments and I can definitely make that video as well. It is to go through and unsubscribe. Unsubscribe from any services that you do not use. Unsubscribe from app notifications that you never actually click on. Unsubscribe from emails. Unsubscribe from text messages from stores. Go through your phone, go through your laptop, go through your iPad, whatever, and take this time to unsubscribe from things that are distracting you and clogging up your life. The, your next year, your next semester will be better if you do this during this winter break. Number four is get caught up on laundry. I am talking about all of your laundry. I'm talking about getting your bedding washed, including pillowcases, fitted sheets, everything. Um, go through and match all of your socks, remove stains from clothes if need be, whatever it is to make sure that you just don't have to worry about laundry when you go back to school or if you're you know, home for the semester because all online stuff so that you don't have to worry about that and you can focus on school, get totally caught up on laundry. Number five is to learn to make coffee at home like a pro. Not only will this save you a lot of money in the long run, trust me, guys, I know that it's like, if you want to spend the $5 a day in Starbucks, do it. It's your life. I'm not telling you not to. From a financial standpoint, I'm though recommending it from a productivity and time management standpoint. Because if you can make coffee that you really like at home, you can save so much time in your day. The amount of time I have lost in my life going to Starbucks, especially when I was on campus. Number six is to do a random act of kindness. I know that this isn't necessarily what you think of when you think of productive, um, but it's still an activity that is better for you and your community than just sitting down scrolling through Instagram or TikTok all day. And I do have an article with 51 ideas for random acts of kindness you can do in your community. I will list it below. They are not, I made that post over a year ago. They are not all 
coronavirus safe so go through and make sure that your random act of kindness or you know your act of kindness in general is COVID safe. Number seven is to work on your resume. Even if you don't plan on applying for a job anytime soon, having your resume up to date and putting some work into it, asking some peers or a, you know, a mentor or anyone in your life that could help you with it, getting that set up now is going to make the job application process so much easier, I promise. If you just have a resume on hand that's ready to go, saves you so much time when you're in the stressful job hunting time. Eight is to declutter your closet. Um, I said that like that because I definitely need to declutter my closet. But decluttering your closet is a great thing to do to stay organized and help you with if you are moving stuff back and forth between a dorm in your house or college apartments or whatever. Um, staying organized and staying decluttered. I know that it's so easy for clothes to just magically pile up again after, you know, six months, 12 months, whenever the last time you declutter it is. So take the time when you have the time during winter break to clutter your closet. Number nine, learn a new skill that can add, be added to your resume. It could be something like coding. Actually, coding is a great thing to learn just the basics of. Learn the basics of HTML, um, just the, if you, unless of course you're in a program where you're learning coding and programming, um, but for everyone else, it is amazing how much it can help your job hunt to understand the basics of coding websites specifically. Um, I'm not telling you to go learn how to, you know, code software programs, but understanding the basics of coding a website is going to make you more of a standout candidate or any other skills. Um, this could be help starting to learn a language, you know, it, you know, look into your industry and where, what career you're pursuing and see if there's anything that you could add to your resume that's going to make you stand out more. And is it, you know, something that you could start learning now during winter break when you have a little bit extra time. Number 10 is to organize your phone. Take the time, declutter your phone out. Um, I have a digital, digital decluttering video that I have a link below as well. I have a lot of links below guys. And, but taking that time, organize your phone, make sure that you're clearing out photos that you don't need, specifically screenshots, go through and put all your app related apps into folders, turn off notifications that you never actually check, things like that, get your phone organized. Number 11 is to get your important documents organized. The most specific thing I have for this tip and productive thing you can do is to get all of your documents, especially if you're home, there's a chance that you have more of your documents now than you would when you're at college. Get one of these and store your scanned in documents on this and, and then also on the cloud. 12 is to start a habit tracker. Habit trackers are a great way to help you form new positive habits. Um, and it's really simple, just grab a notebook and make, you know, write out the date of each day. You can also use like a calendar or you can actually buy a habit tracker, but the easiest thing to do is to just grab a notebook and write out the dates for each day of the month, like, you know, one, 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 two, one, three. And then for each page, you know, put the habit you want to start forming at the top. And then each day when you do it, just put a check mark. Or if you don't do it that day, put an X. But when you know that you have to, at the end of your day, mark whether or not you did your habit, you are so much more likely to actually do your habit. And when you do a habit every day, it actually becomes a habit that you don't have to track anymore. Number 13 is to take a free online class. There are so many colleges and different organizations that have started releasing, especially during the pandemic, free online classes that people can take. A lot of them you can get legitimate certificates from and that's a great thing to add to your resume. And it's just also, you know, if you want to take a online class in something you're interested in, maybe you're interested in photography, you can take a free online class in that. And even if it's not relevant to your career path, it's just a fun, productive thing that you can do when you have some extra time on your hands. Number 14 is one that I think is super fun and it's to make a things you want to learn bucket list. So, you know, you think of like travel bucket lists and just general life bucket lists and that's also a productive thing you could do during your winter break but this is a very specific type of bucket list and it's things that you want to learn in your lifetime. Um, and I add to mine all the time, but making your original one, you know, things like different languages that you want to learn. Do you want to learn how to code? Do you want to learn photography? Is there different skills or hobbies that you want to learn? Make a cool, make a bucket list of that. Um, 
it sounds kind of funny, but it's, it's really a cool thing to have. And it's a great way to constantly remind yourself of the importance of lifelong learning. Number 15 is to start a blog or a website. This may seem like an overwhelming task, but I promise you it's not as bad as you think it is. You can absolutely go to WordPress and do a free plan or do their really basic plan. Uh, do not fall for the people on the internet that say that you absolutely have to be self-hosted, if, especially if you're doing this to like just a fun little blog to share things that you're interested in or if you're starting a professional website so that you can add more about, you know, um, projects, things like that. If you are close to graduating from college, having a website that you can put a link to on your resume and have people go check that out and they can see examples of work that you've done and projects and it, it gives a more visual way for companies to view what you're capable of as well as it's, it's unique. It's not that many people do it. Um, so it's a really great way to stand out in the job application process. 16 is to start a fitness challenge. I, I know that a lot of people think of, you know, I'm going to get home and I'm going to get in shape in a month. You know, I'm going to really start building those healthy fitness habits and that's great. But one of the best ways to actually do it is just do a fitness challenge, do a 30 day challenge, do, you know, 30 day, you know, they, what, what is that called? Like couch to 5k. I think that's what it's called. Um, but they have like the 30 day programs, um, in fitness challenges, you know, you can do an abs challenge or whatever. Um, it's a great way to get shit when you're home during winter break. 15 is to print out all of your syllabi for the next semester. You may have to do this closer towards the end of your winter break because it depends on when your professors are putting in your syllabi up on their, you know, whatever we use, Carmen, I don't know what other schools, you know, your online system. And so that you can then print out the syllabus and go through. My recommendation for this is to read through the whole thing, like cover to cover, because when you get burned one time by not reading the whole syllabus, you will regret it. And then go through and highlight anything that's really important or abnormal that you need to make sure that you remember, and then go through and put the dates that they put on the syllabus into your planner. Number 18 is to make a budget. Budget your next semester or your next year. Um, I do recommend getting into the habit when you're in college of budgeting for years, like a whole year, not just a semester. But make a budget, and there are so many free apps that you can literally just go in the app store and type in budget or budget tracker, and you can make budgets. There, you know, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be really simple. But learning how to budget your money and following a budget now when you're in your early 20s is going to set you up for financial success in the long run. Number 19 is to go through on your social media and do an audit of who you follow. Unfollow anyone who does not bring you joy. <laughs> like Mercado, it doesn't spark joy. Um, but I'm serious, go through, if there are really negative people on your social media, you do not need to follow them. You do not need to do that. Make your social media accounts a place that brings you joy and brings you happiness because social media can be so detrimental to everyone's mental wellness. Um, and so going through and making sure that you're trying your best to intentionally follow people that only bring you joy and don't cause you stress or negativity in your life. And you are in a time now when you're in college where it might be a little bit easier for you to learn that might be a better opportunity for you to maybe unfollow people from high school or your hometown that maybe don't bring you very much joy on your social media and don't feel guilty about it. You are protecting your mental health and your mental wellness and that's what comes first. So just, just unfollow them. They probably won't even notice anyways. And the last one is to spend your month of your winter break breaking bad habits. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into this because that's, there's a lot of information that goes into breaking a bad habit. I have an article about it below on how you can break a bad habit in a month. And I really recommend checking that out if you have a habit that you are trying to break. That's for you guys today. Like I said, if you're interested in learning the other 45 ideas for productive things to do during your winter break, check out the description box below for my full blog post on this topic. And then I hope that you have a safe winter break. I hope you have a fun winter break. And I hope that it recharges you and refreshes you for your next semester. And stay safe out there, guys, and have a good one.